Hello and welcome, episode 10, season two. Today we're working on a few things and that's a drip system. And the reason why is we have some smaller containers and I wanna have some support when it comes to watering. I think if I share my reasoning with you, you'll be able to better choose the type of system you might use in your own garden. Now you'll notice we're not setting up a drip system over in quadrant two on the three by three, nor are we setting up a drip system in the 30 gallons or the earth box. I'll explain why we may do it in the future, but for right now, there's not really a need I really enjoy hand watering and it's a pretty small setup, but let's jump into quadrant one after I show you the scrog screens over here and just get into the drip system. So I'll get to it in a minute. For the last episode, I built one of these custom bamboo trellises. I mentioned Jay Plant Speaker does this in his greenhouse. A lot of people have used bamboo for a long time. A couple of the things I mentioned was don't poke your eye out. A lot of times people will cover it because if you're reaching around in here to tuck the plants or if you rapidly move because you see something, you could definitely poke an eye out, so be aware of that. We built the other two, so I wanted to just show you what they look like. We also bent a little bit, we moved the plants, we also removed some of the lower foliage, you can see all the leaves that are in there. And the goal is to open up by removing some of the leaves, because the light is flat, to start to hit areas where it would have been shaded and promote the growth there. At the same time as they're getting a little bit of light, we keep bending them. So you'll notice this one is bent up right here, and it's because I tipped it underneath there. So as they get taller, you can bend them down and they'll go over on the this screen. And since this is custom built, it's all reusable, I can undo these rubber twist ties and use them for years, and the bamboo I can keep around. So when it comes time to harvest, I can just remove the trellising really quickly, cut the whole plant and hang the whole plant, and that makes it really nice, where normally if you have a plastic trellis, you have to cut it and throw it away, which means it's not reusable. Or if you have a metal trellis like this one, you have to pull the plants through it. You don't want to cut your expensive metal trellis. So some considerations there. Other than that, the plants are looking really good after they got kind of stuffed down for the first time and they're now going to start to grow back. And even by the time we film the next episode, there's going to be a significant difference. They're going to start filling this screen and I'll keep tucking them down to make it wider in here. Once we've gotten all the squares full of tops and we have enough foliage in here, we're gonna flip to flower, and then I'll probably put another layer of screen up here, custom built with the bamboo to support the big buds that are gonna grow in here so they don't fall over. And that'll be what we do. Eventually, I'll raise the light, but for right now, everything's set and it's working really well. I haven't had to do much. 30 gallons of soil holds a lot of water. The watering routine over here has been very minimal. I just take one chapin in here, and I'm putting you know, a gallon in each plant at, at most until the plants really start to grow a lot faster, especially because I just hacked them back. There's not a reason to really ramp it up. I'm feeling the weight. I'm keeping an eye on things, but it's just been super steady in here on the 30 gallons. They're going really fast. You can see this has jumped a little bit. Same thing. I'll be just tucking these as I go. I think maybe when I'm done with the drip, I'll use this as an example because I can do some tucking right now and show you what the goal is. So stick around to the end and I'll go back here and I'll show you what to look for to remove, what to keep on the plant and how we're going to keep filling up the canopy here. And if you haven't been following the whole time, these are two different genetics, and so they're gonna act very differently as well. So your trellising system might be different. The amount of time it takes to fill up the screen might be different. The amount they stretch when you go to flower might be different. So once you learn your genetics, you can more appropriately make these decisions. Let's do it, let's jump into the drip. So I wanna just get down here, and I've already set the drip system up, but instead of me just pointing it out, I wanna go over the whole system and I also want to build one right now for you. So what I've done is, this is actually cold right now, but when I normally do it, all these connections, I put hot water in here. And then I just throw my drip in the hot water and it makes it really malleable and it makes it slightly easier to work with, with your hands. If you've never done drip before, it can be really hard on the hands to pinch and, and do that. Sometimes you can grab pliers and use those to do it. Either way, if you're doing a whole bunch of them, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. That's one of the downsides of the process. With three little containers like this, it's no big deal. So I'll just begin and explain what I did. I've got a four-way connection over here on a hose. The hose is an RV hose and it's for drinking water. So you could just use a garden hose, but I wanted to make sure that we kept everything clean. That garden hose goes to the same reservoir that's powering the humidifier. The humidifier has a gravity-fed drip system. It comes out the bottom and it goes through this water tube that's right here, and it's got a a float valve in there. The gravity of this big trash can of water is pushing down and trying to drain. It drains into here until the float valve shuts it off, until it calls for more water based on the environmental controls. 
In that same one, we have out the top of the container, which I'll show you, a hose connected to a ACE submersible pump. We'll be pumping the water to this head whenever I need it. Now in here, this is controllable, so you can just twist this knob and that will give you more, more uh, water pressure or less water pressure. And that's important in this configuration because I'm not running all four of them. And if I have 100% pressure, it might leak a little bit. I don't wanna have too much back pressure on it. I just want the drip system to operate without any leaks. And so this is connected into a hose connector, which I've got right here. If you take a look, connects to the hose, and then it's a piece of PVC, and I just put some uh, tape on there, and I screw it into this four-way. That's it. You can make a whole like riser with a stand on it, but I just leave it like that, and it's really not an issue. And the next thing you'll notice is that I've taped the lead to the bucket here so that it doesn't move when I move the container around. Um, otherwise, these, are, these tend to move around a little bit. That's it. I'll show you how I built it right now and which parts that I used and why. And that'll probably give you a few ideas. But the, these I bought at Home Depot. The rest I think I bought at Ace Hardware. Realistically, anywhere you go will probably have a little drip like gardening system set up. You can just go pick and choose parts there. They don't have to be exactly like this. But I think if you watch, you'll get the idea. Now, I could have done one line to each one of these drippers. There's four drippers in each one of these containers. But for me, it was easier to just do a continual flow through in a loop around the container. And I'll show you how I did that. Essentially, I just wanted to get, you need to cut a piece of length that's gonna go from here to the actual beginning of your container. And so that would be whatever length that you want. On these Orbit ones, you'll notice that they have these little caps that you can leave on if you're not using it. And when you unthread it, this little ridge here, it's hard to get the drip over. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut, not a 45, but like a little bit of an angle on the tubing to make it easier for me to manipulate it onto there. And then this would just get pushed on here. And that's it. So once it's fully connected, now it's ready to set up from this point. And then all that we have to do is find out how often we wanna do this. Now, some people will use like a 15 minute timer, but then it has to run for 15 minutes where the Niwa is an app on my phone and I can run it by the minute. So I can have this programmed to turn on by the hose pump electronically for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, multiple times per day, one time per day, whatever I really want to do. And then if I'm at home and I'm, I'm thinking that I need to do something, like I'm not gonna drive in for the day, I can just go to the app and update my recipe so that it waters that day. And then that's kind of a helper in that regard. And I'll also explain a little more about the blue mat conversation and why I chose to do drip versus the automatic as we go. But let me just build this and we'll talk about the rest. So from here, all I did is I used a 45 degree. Now you can buy these barbed elbows. They have T connectors, every kind, Ace Hardware, Home Depot, wherever you go, it doesn't matter. And I used a 90 degree here just to make it a little bit easier. You don't need this piece, but this bend here can start to put pressure on these little stakes and move things around. This is a way for me to tape it here and have it kind of at that hard angle. But you'll just push the barb in. They are a pain, but it's worth it. That's it. Now I've got this connection here. I would tape it to my bucket right here and then I would build this and put it on. So let me show you how I built this entire contraption and what type of drippers I started using. All right, so what's in here that I'm about to build is a series of tubes and these little half gallon per hour dripping systems. If you take one button dripper at a half gallon per hour, one more at a half gallon per hour, there's four of them that totals up to two gallons per hour that's gonna come out of here if I ran the pump for a full hour. And using those numbers, I can formulate how often I'd like to water, how much water will ultimately come out. Alternatively, you can just set a bucket, put your dripper in it and run it and see how much does come out to make sure that it's accurate. Totally up to you. The exact volume doesn't matter so long as I'm checking in here and making sure that it's keeping up with the amount of water that I want. Some of these are different. This is an inline and this is a regular one. And that way it can be at the end of my line where these ones flow through. So let's look at that right now. I would normally cut more tubing here. And if you notice, what I do is I cut them all about the same. That way the pressure's the same on all of them. So this first one, I just line up here, get the same length on all of them and cut it. And this next one are three even pieces. So I just line it up right there. And what I'm, I did the initial measurements was just to get it so that it's in each quadrant because I'm doing four, so it's fairly even around there. At the low rate that we're doing, at a half gallon per hour, so if you look at that, 0.5 GPH, half gallon per hour, 
that's really going to slowly drip, which means it'll have a chance to disperse wide. And that's what I want. I want even watering everywhere in here. So even though it's just dripping straight down, it'll slowly spread out in here. And then I can also hand water. The beauty of using a drip system is I don't have to take 100% of the water from the drip. I can have it just do a little bit of the water so that they are sure to get it first thing in the morning. I tend to get caught up at the office sometimes and don't make it in here for a few hours. Might be a great way to use the drip system. Then I can hand water what I want using RootWise, anything else without overdoing it. Um, where if I'm completely relying on the system and 100% of the water is coming here, I might borderline ride the edge of overwatering. So um, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna cut two more because that's how many are in each setup. Now again, I just have this in the bucket normally in hot water to make them a little more malleable. Since I built this earlier, it's already gotten turned into cold water, but it does help if you're having trouble. So now I've got all these connections. I need to pick the drippers out. These ones are half gallon per hour mini inline drippers from Ace Hardware. And since they're in line, they have connection on both sides. And so I just match them all the same direction. Okay, and then this will hook to the 45 right here. And you can see it's naturally curved, so I'm gonna make sure that as I go around, it just follows that natural curve around the container. And the only reason you don't really need this, it's just that how I set it up originally, I wanted that 45 in there. And so if you take that out, you can just connect right here to this. But for me to have it straight off of here and hard angled with the tape, I like to do it this way. So now I've got my first connection piece, which you can see. Then I'm gonna keep it going around like this. So I'll put another connector there, that way they're all going the same direction. Now I'm gonna turn this on and show you when we're done, but they just drip from these small holes in here straight downwards and they'll just be dripping. So there's nothing, it's not like it sprays out like a mist. One more, I've got three of these inline ones per setup. Now the last one, I'm gonna attach this and then grab the regular button dripper instead of the inline mini drippers. It only has the barbed attachment on one side and this is just a dripper. You can't, you don't wanna connect the tube to the other side. So this goes on the very end. So this last one will go on here. And what I wanted to talk about while doing this is that there's, there's a pressure concern, there's water concern when you're on a farm or when you're setting up a larger commercial grow, you have to start doing math when it comes to drip. And what you need to find out is your actual pressure and the gallons per minute, the gallons per hour flow of water that you have. And that'll calculate how many of these drippers that you can have that'll actually safely operate. And there's two sides of that. If I put 10,000 of these half gallon per hour drippers on here, eventually a half gallon per hour is gonna add up to the point where it's hundreds of gallons per hour and it's more than my actual water service can provide. So they won't be even anymore. The other thing to consider is that if I um, have too much pressure. So if I only put one dripper tube on there, open it up to full pressure, I could be popping these off and leaking at the seams because it's overdoing the amount of pressure that's required to keep it at a half gallon per minute. It's not much, or half gallon per hour. So on this adjustable orbit head, what you can do is one direction this way, counterclockwise opens it and clockwise closes it. So you can go to the tightest setting and just barely back it off a little bit and, and that would fire one dripper no problem, even with the same pump. But the pump's working fairly hard and I don't want it to be leaking everywhere. So I'll hook up more than one dripper. That's why I have a four system and I'll open the system up just a little bit until they're all evenly dripping. At that point, we have enough pressure to be at half gallon per minute. It's easy with three of these. I just wanted to explain that you can't just go throwing drippers everywhere. At a certain point when you have enough of them, you have to consider is there enough pressure? Is there enough water? If you've got questions about that or if you have a particular setup you need some math help on, there's a lot of online calculators and I could probably help you too. So um, that's all. That's what the system looks like. I just tape it here. And then the last piece of the puzzle is I buy these little stakes. These are micro tubing stakes. I think it was from Home Depot. And these just have a little clip and that connects to the tubing. You can see I'm using that to float these above the mulch and also keep them in the same spot so that as I top dress in here, it'll go underneath and it'll water down on top of things. I can raise these up or I can lower them and I can put multiple stakes in here to keep them in the same spot and they're very thin so they don't really like rip a hole in the soil. I like them, super easy setup. I hope that it helps you if, if it's something that you've been considering. Now to finish the conversation, I did mention the blue mat conversation um, and the FAQs. I've had a lot of people ask me about that. Let me just sit down, that's better. I'm not positive how I'm gonna set it up. They don't need water today, so I'll just drip it 
for you so you can see what it looks like. But I'm not actually going to turn it on until tomorrow for its first watering and then I'll decide, do I wanna do a minute, two minute, multiple times per day? In the beginning, I was thinking about only using this on Sunday so that I don't have to come in here and drive in and hand water. But I'd like to use it a little bit. So the way that I'm gonna use it is each day, I'm gonna water maybe half of what I would normally water so that I still have the opportunity to come in here and add root wise, add aminos, add anything that I'd like because they're in smaller containers. That'll give me the opportunity to control it a little bit. And the other thing with drip is if you overdo it, you can, you've can you seen in our YouTube series what overwatering can do. It can really slow things down. So I'd, I'd much rather when you're starting your drip system to undershoot and when you inspect the next day, be required to hand water a little bit and then maybe up it by a minute or two and then check the next day. But if you overdo it and it's waterlogged, it's gonna take you a week to really test your system out because now you can't drip on it at all because you overdid it the first time. So those are some good considerations. Err on the side of caution. You can always hand water if it's under. You can always add more minutes to it, but if you've overdone it, now you gotta wait, which means it's more time to calibrate your system. The comparison for Blue Mat, I think would be the final portion. So what are the problems with that? What are the benefits of it? It's a really, it's a brilliant system. It allows each plant to intelligently drink or intelligently be watered what it needs. So if you have a huge plant and a small plant, the huge plant is gonna dry that carrot out more often and call for water individually to itself more often than the small plant. That's great. Um, the alternative for me is to just drip them all equal and hand water the bigger plant a little more. Otherwise, I could easily put a two gallon per hour dripper on the bigger plant and a half gallon per dripper on the smaller plant. It's not exact though, where the carrot is exact based on the properties that work with the moisture movement. Now here's the thing that typically keeps it in a moist level all the time. A lot of people like to have a little bit of a dry down period um, as opposed to having it solid moist all the time. I think in living soil, we wanna be in the target range, not totally moist, not totally dry. So blue mats do fit that idea, but there's some challenges. If you get an air bubble in the carrot, it can cause it not to act properly. You have to really make sure that it's done right. And if you're harvesting and moving plants back in, you have to recalibrate them all and that can be a problem. Blue mats will water all the water needed. I'd have to buy a whole bunch of them to put in here to make the system work. Since it's gravity, if there's a problem where that ball valve doesn't close either because of debris or an air bubble, it'll literally drain my entire reservoir in here onto the floor. And you've seen what overwatering can do. So if that even happens once in three years, that's a whole cycle that's slowed down where with a drip system like this, airing on the side of caution where I'm hand watering above and beyond the minimum, um, the worst that can happen is uh, electronically it doesn't fire. And, and because I'm not relying on it, because I know I'm gonna hand water and I'm checking on things, I'm in here anyway. So I can fix the system, hand water, whatever I need to do. So it still gives us that personal hand watering touch. So it's a hybrid model of uh, hand watering and automation. And I think it's a really good way to go, especially in a large greenhouse. If you have one fully automated system fail, you may be relying on it so much that you may not see that plant in the middle that's just dying. Where if you're on a drip system and you're having to, by, by way of making it a manual hybrid system, check on everything, you, you might be more likely to catch that problem in your automation before it becomes a domino effect. So take it for what it's worth. Blue mats are an absolutely great product. You can buy them, check them out, use them. If you like this idea of using a pump, either way, I think you should learn about it. You don't have to use drip by any means. You can see I don't do it on any of the other setups. I wouldn't hesitate to put a drip system into anything that I run. And you can at least run the minimum that way. But I will advise you, people that have not mastered the art, the discipline of gardening, and think they're gonna buy a shortcut for their garden, will oftentimes find that the shortcut bites them in the ass. This is a tool for people that know how to water or for people that are gonna err on the side of caution. If you're trying to go with full, full automation, I think that you're missing some of the benefit of the garden, especially when it's a home garden where a lot of it's just the love of the plant. Take it for what it's worth. That's the Build-A-Soil basic five gallon drip setup that we're gonna run here. So I wanna show you the reservoir here. And this is the Rubbermaid Brute trash can that we use. And in here is the water that we've been using for not only the humidifier, but now for this. So I'm gonna fill it up, but you can see the pump that's in here. And this is just an ACE pump. I'll show you the box. And I've got an RV hose connected to it for drinking water. And then what I did is I, I cut the lid just a little bit. And that allows me to let the power line and the hose go through and still keep the lid in here so no dust goes in the water. That's it. I just took the hose and it connects right into that hose adapter that goes into the four-way connection that I showed you in the tent. From the end of the pump, 
This is going to plug into the Niwa, the white power strip, and then it'll send power to here only for the couple of minutes per day that I want it to run. I want to show you what it looks like while it's dripping. So let's do it right now. I'm turning it on right now. So a couple of things that I wanted to go over while this is firing. I think if you look right here, you can see it's just steadily dropping drops. It's a slightly larger drop out of these inline ones that's a little bit slower and a slightly smaller drop that's a little faster here, but they're both half gallon per hour. Now, if I were to turn the knob on the orbit, increase the pressure, I could start to have some drips on the floor. So I keep it so that there's no drips on there and all of these are flowing perfectly evenly. And I want you to check them all because what can happen is uh, one of them, we actually had this happen. One of these drippers was not dropping. It just would be very infrequent. And I want you to, before you fully do the system, rip that one out and just install a new one. Nine times out of 10, that fixes the problem. If it's a pressure issue or something else, obviously you can increase the pressure, but we want to visually see that they're all dripping at the same rate. And that means that everything that we installed is healthy and it's good and it's going to work as intended. That's it. The system's on. It's slowly dripping right now. Uh, these don't need water, so I'm just going to go shut it off. Normally, I would let that run for a, a predefined number of minutes to make sure that I get even watering throughout the entire container. So I'm gonna go turn it off. Okay, so now you've seen the drip system. I did want to address a couple things I forgot to mention while I was pointing the plants out. They look really different from last time, and it's because you'll notice that each one of these connection points, there was big leaves. I pulled every one of the large, huge fan leaves that were from the main stock. Since the main stock had the original fan leaves that were coming out, those were huge dinosaur leaves. And they were shading a lot of these smaller branches. Now normally outside, the sun would go around the edges and these would get the light and they would shine through in this perfect candelabra like Christmas tree shape. But when we have a flat canopy, we'd prefer to have it flat. I mentioned I could start bending these and pinching these right now to make it more flat. But part of me wants to just let them do their thing in the five gallons and see what the genetics do. Sometimes when I run them from seed the first time, I just don't touch them besides defoliating a little bit and let them show me their natural shape so I can determine if I like that natural shape. And I gotta tell you, all three of these look beautiful. Uh, but I did wanna address that because the last time you saw these, there was huge leaves covering them. And as soon as I uncovered them, they really started to jump all the new growth all over the place. Uh, looking great in here, really like these. Let's look at the earth box. I didn't go over that quadrant when we were doing the walk around. A couple of you guys have asked about this smaller one here in the earth box. You'll notice it's not as big as the other two. And that was a mistake that was made by me and I just wanted to address it so you don't follow through with the same thing. On the transplant video, if you go back, You'll see that I tilled cover crop, I uh, chopped the cover crop down in here and I watered it. Well, this is this third cycle no-till. It was already fairly wet. And so in here, the cover crop's all gone. It's been completely broken down. But the challenge is, is that it held a lot of water because the cover crop immediately stopped drinking as soon as I terminated it and covered it. And there was plenty of moisture in it because it's a no-till third cycle. It's not as aerated, full of pumice like the other two. The other two did not have that issue and they just took off running. This one, we identified the issue right away. We stopped watering it. All the new growth is looking phenomenally healthy. So my last decision that I have to make in here besides the drip, which I just did, is how am I gonna screen this? Do I wanna build bamboo screens on each earth box by just shoving the bamboo poles in here? Or do I wanna do my normal PVC style over the entire three plants? My goal will be to smash the two taller plants enough so they fill up more of the screen and they give the height that will allow this third smaller plant to be even, at least in height. It may not happen, but I'm gonna do my best to give this plant a really good shot at it because I think the quality on the no-till will be really good and I wanna be able to show you the differences. Beyond that, that's everything. We talked about this. Okay, so yesterday I was showing you the drip system for the five gallon quadrant and it's all set up and we've done a test run now and I wanna actually show you the Niwa app, how I turn it on. I'm gonna use that opportunity to teach you about the final piece that you have to know about. What'll happen is if you don't have this little piece that I put in here, this tube is basically being pushed on by this pump. What'll happen when the pump turns off is there's still, there's no air bubbles in the line and the drip system will still be pushing water out almost like you siphoned it out of here. And because my containers are lower than my reservoir, if it's full, that would drain this down until essentially, like if you've ever siphoned gas or anything, you have to get the siphon going and put it below the reservoir. And so at that point, it'll just dump the whole container out. It'll literally keep pumping and pumping even though the pump's off just because of the effect of the drain point being lower than the reservoir point. So to solve it, all I did is take a, my knife 
and I gently pushed in through the hose here and twisted until I made a pinhole and then I shoved this 90 degree elbow that's from the drip system. And now what happens when it turns on is it jets water out of here and it kind of aerates the water. Now the reason why this is acceptable for me is that I have a big powerful pump so that jetting of water is not going to lower the pressure on my drip system. If that's of concern you can actually just put a half gallon per minute or half gallon per hour dripper on here just by plugging the tube in and now it'll just drip out of here when the pump's running and it'll still act as a vacuum release. So what happens when the pump turns off now it sucks air in here as opposed to sucking all the water through and continuing to siphon. So that'll break the siphon effect, that'll keep it so your reservoir is full and, and everything shuts off right when it's supposed to shut off instead of continuing to drip. I'm gonna show you what happens when it turns on and use this as an opportunity to show you how the Niwa works. So on the Niwa, it says Grow Hub 2, that's the one I'm using for the 10 by 10. It has all of the data and has really good stats. You can see the VPD, the temperature, the humidity. And today what I'm gonna do is set the actual cycles on here where I, tell it which days to water, what time I want to water. And I'm gonna go over here on a whiteboard in a moment and I'm gonna show you how to calculate how many times to water and for how long based on what you want to achieve in your grow. As soon as the, talk, the time changes over, the pump's gonna fire up and that's gonna trigger this system to start running. This pump that I'm using, it's pretty big as far as for this basic purpose. It's a sixth horsepower. I could have easily gotten one much smaller. So you can get something smaller, save some money, this one I got big so that I could expand in the future, and that might be something to consider. So that's what happens when the timer is tripped. Now you can just order some digital timer off Amazon, but if you have the Niwa app, then you can see everything else that's going on in your grow room. You can adjust the recipe, increase the amount of time. Since I'm erring on the side of caution, there's gonna be a time where I'm just manually watering a little bit more, and then it gives me a little bit of a cycle where some of the other automatic drip systems will keep it evenly wet forever. I like it to have just a tiny bit of dry down and then a re-wet and I, I'm in control of that. And this, uh, when it goes off, will actually release it so that it stops dripping right away. That's it. So I'm gonna set up my full recipe and I'm gonna show you how to calculate, calculate that right now so that I'm not overwatering my containers or underwatering. We've got the whiteboard over here, so I want to utilize it. I know some people might think we're some huge, huge call center, um, but it's just the homies. We're all growers, and we just try and share the message. So you can buy many different drippers. I told you what I'm doing, and that's how I'm going to run the math. I think that you can interplug in different drippers, and you could do the math easily after this. So drippers per container. I'm running four drippers per container. Okay, and I'm doing a half gallon per hour. Very common, you can buy one gallon per hour, two gallon per hour, and the reason why is in your yard, you might have a big tree and a small plant and you want the timer to run the same amount of time. So one gets more flow, one gets less flow. For me, it's simple, they're all five gallons. The reason the volume of soil is important is I don't want water just pouring through here and dumping out to the bottom. And if you've seen our series number one, and even on this series with the no-till earth box, overwatering it slows down the growth. In living soil, plants will fight through some inhospitable conditions and still look pretty good. I want you to get the watering right so that you get all of the benefits. And so you'll notice that I teach uh, kind of a window of 5% to 10% by volume. And our thought is if you overwater, you can't take it back out. If you underwater, you can always water again, either the same day, an hour later, or even the next day. And so the less is more in this regard. You have to understand a little bit, and so I'm hoping to share this with you if you're new. Usually, if you have, say, a 10-gallon container, 10% of that is one gallon. That's the most you ever want to water at once. Otherwise, it's going to be just pouring out the bottom. 5%, half that max volume is kind of a normal watering. When the plant's just a seedling, you might not get up to 5% right away, but once things are going, 5% is a pretty normal amount. As the plant gets bigger, it might be a 5% water every day. As the plant is medium size, it might be a 5% water every couple days. But inevitably, if you're doing things right, there will come a time, maybe once a week or two, where you're like, you know, I really wanna make sure that as this plant's growing, I'm not underdoing it. So I'm gonna water deep one time and then back off. And a lot of times that'll be that 10% maximum mark. So it's up to you. Because I wanna drip and because I'd like to water, I only want the drip to do a portion of the watering. I'm gonna completely eliminate this from our process. And I wanna operate more on this as my new maximum, and that's gonna include even the manual watering. So I would prefer if my drip was less than 5%. 
That way I can come in and add extra, either with some RootWise or some aminos in those five gallons that might be an organic feed. And I don't want it to be so wet that I can't feed that day or I can't water that day. That's this hybrid model I'm working with. So if I've got a half gallon per hour and I want to be at my max is 5%, I can just say five gallons times is 5%. Okay, and this is going to be my maximum. And with a calculator or whatever you want to do, that's 0.25 gallons. Okay, so 0.25 gallons is my max, quarter gallon. Well, if you notice that I have a half gallon per hour dripper, and I've got four drippers, four times a half gallon dripper, we're going to get two gallons per hour over here. That's what would happen. If I irrigated for one hour, it's gonna give me two gallons. Well, that's way too high. I need a quarter gallon at the very most. Without a calculator, you can just mentally have it. I think it's easy. So one hour, right, equals two gallons. A half hour equals one gallon. And a quarter hour, which is 15 minutes, is gonna equal 0.5 gallons. I'm almost there. One more half. So 7.5 minutes is my maximum, and that equals 0.25 gallons. That would give me my quarter gallon in that container. Now, caveat, my pump, it's an Ace Hardware pump. I don't know if it's gonna keep the exact perfect pressure to maintain exactly a half gallon per hour out of this dripper. This is a rule of thumb. And so I'm gonna err on the side of caution always here so I don't do too much. And because I'm planning on manually watering, it's totally fine. If I notice it's a little bit too little, I can always add a minute on my Niwa app or on my timer, and then I'll be happy from there. So it's, it's, it's better to err on the side of caution. So let's look at that. I'd like to drip maybe two times per day. And the beauty of drip is I don't have to be there, so I can water right when the lights come on. And maybe I can water midway through the day, and I can leave a gap somewhere in there for me to do my manual watering. Well, let's say I wanna drip two times per day, and I also wanna do one manual watering. Okay, so what does that mean then? That's about three times that I'd like to water at most. Three times watering. And as the plant gets bigger, bigger, maybe I go up to four or five times a day, right? I just change this, but I still only manually water once. Let's just call it eight minutes because I have to do whole minutes on my drip system. And let's say I wanna do half of that manual, right? And half of it on drip. That means I need to run for four minutes. And that'll give me half of my max amount. And I wanna do it twice, twice per day. So now that means I'll run it another half, two minutes. That's my total. I'm gonna be running my irrigation setup two minutes at a time, twice per day, with four half gallon drippers. And that's gonna give me approximately half the volume that I need, which is that quarter gallon. And so you can convert to ounces and find it. If you're really curious about your pump system, you can actually take one of your dripper setups and set it in a bucket and then let it run through its course and make sure that it's accurate. I've done it before and it works really well. So I'm gonna be running for two minutes. When that pump turns on twice a day, that's gonna leave me room to manually water. And as these plants get bigger and call for more water, I'm gonna have other stages in my Niwa controller where I do it for maybe three minutes or maybe I do it three times per day. Totally up to me, I'm now in control, even when I'm not here, or I can add extra minutes if I'm out of town. And that's the beauty of leveraging the math and the drip system. And the other cool part is, they're very easy to set up, and they cost pennies on the dollar compared to other ways of doing it. I mean, you can buy these little drippers that I used for a few bucks a pack. A pump, you can spend 20 bucks up to maybe 100 bucks, depending on the size. And you're in action. I mean, it's really not that much investment, and now you have a helper in the garden. And that's the way I like to look at it. Other systems, kind of fully automate, I like to do a hybrid where it's manual automation. I hope that makes sense. All right, so I did want to show you the offices we kind of walked through here. And if you notice one thing, it's pretty small in here, and this is our offices. So there's a few desks. Everybody's cleared out of here right now because we're videoing. They don't want to interrupt. And so we only have a few hold spots. We have our support ticket system. We have our live chat, and it's all the same people that are doing it. And to keep the schedule, well, we only have a couple people here at a time that are actually involved in customer service. And so we've got Branson, we've got Dean who does all of our video editing, and then we've got Damon who you probably talked to, Kevin's desk is right there. And uh, we've got Caprone who does a lot of the freight stuff all right here in this office. So when you call in, sometimes it might take a minute for us to get to your phone call. There's only a couple of us and we're not some big corporate office, but we sincerely appreciate your patience. We really like that you guys are willing to actually call and talk to us on the phone. So I promise to make sure that we have live humans here that can help. But in the event, 
we get several calls all at once and it swamps the system, we're about to implement a way where you can leave your callback number and one of our staff will call you back so you don't have to wait on hold the whole time. Beyond that, the people that have waited, we really appreciate you. We just wanted to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes. I think people are surprised to find, um, even with hundreds of gardening stores carrying our products, the majority of the employees are in the logistics and it's hard to manage. Sometimes we don't have much to do for hours at a time and sometimes there's a hundred people calling in at once. So thanks for your time and I hope that you find this information useful. I'd like to do more information with math because there's a lot of questions that we get when people call in to our customer service about volumes of soil containers and soil math. And we got really good feedback on one of the last episodes about yes, more in depth on soil testing. We're gonna do all that stuff. We'll probably have to use the whiteboard. So I hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys. Subscribe as always so you get the updates. Tell your friends about this. Comment in there, ask questions. We'll be sure to get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode.